if you were in that kind of a society where middle class success meant becoming an engineer or a doctor uh the instinct was to you no know, we're all prisoners of our skill and our instincts and my instinct from very early days i don't know why has been always be uh looking for uh choices which are off the beaten path and uh so having been introduced to equities at a very early age thanks to my father uh i thought it probably is a more interesting than being an engineer or a doctor so that instinct has pretty much continued with me through and through over the last 25 30 years and in many ways i should say uh stands me in good stead uh sometimes you f- you know you fail and it's very painful because you don't look around and say there are so many other people who have also failed taking the same decision i joined the tata ecosystem through the tata administrative services program so it's a program a management trainee onboarding program which kind of facilitates uh development of leadership talent uh in the group so that happened in 2001 and after the first year of rotation it's a program where i love you to be part of multiple projects in various tata companies so after that first year i had this opportunity to work in tata sons and uh, being the group company group holding company gives you this whole uh you know perspective of looking at the whole group uh with a bird's eye and uh, stepping back i would say that was very valuable in its own way and uh, i did have one or two options before trent and didn't excite me as much because i was having so much fun in the group finance team uh and when trent came up i said uh, retail feels very interesting it's consumer it touches a uh, lot of color and has a lot of flavor so why not Uh, explore it and uh, mr noel dada and myself were working on a project and he said venkat would you consider something like this uh, and then the rest of it is uh, you know history it's a manifestation uh, of putting a proposition in front of uh, a very diverse audience which you don't necessarily control and it's far less sterile than being in a b2b kind of space and that in summary is the exciting part it is constantly changing and constantly relevant to the end customer and in many ways i keep telling uh, investors and my colleagues as well that our business is probably two thirds psychology and one third everything else and psychology itself is such a fascinating space to uh, play in and uh, retail really allows you to put to work uh, a lot of that toolkit being willing to stand out of the popular narrative and be willing to bet on things which will deliver value much later it's more pain now gain later behavior i think the multiple of those uh, what i call counter intuitive choices that you would find within the trent ecosystem one is the choice of saying we want it to be own branded we want every one of our brands for instance west side is 100% own branded we don't retail any third party fare uh second we always been direct to consumer in sense we don't sell even one piece of merchandise to anybody other than the end customer we do not want an intermediary imagine if you had much wider distribution and if you had much wider distribution you'd have much more consumer touch points than what you currently have you'd have much more revenues and the brand salience would increase but there are choices to be made and there are implication of those choices third we don't do anything about the line we hardly advertise you hardly will find us in the media now it's very counterintuitive i think it makes trend different and once you establish consumer connect the consumer also relates to that in many ways subliminally they may not be able to explain why and that's the whole point business is extremely dynamic and when you're pitching with relevance to the customer every week otherwise you're not relevant and the kind of audiences that we engage with they have very significant amounts of exposure on one side and a significant amount of expectation on the other side and marrying that is really the trick 
so in doing so, I think it's about spotting trends, translating them into product propositions that make commercial sense. So that's one side, the people side of it, of finding it. And then the execution side. Imagine if you were working with Westside and you had an eye for spotting trends and converting them into product propositions that resonate with our target audience. That's great. But that's one part of the story. The other part of the story is we need the engine which allows it, facilitates it to land. So that includes the whole vendor ecosystem, the whole piece around logistics, warehousing, the reach through stores and online. Everything needs to come together for that moment of truth to be realized for the customer. So Westside's pitch has always been aspirational fashion at surprisingly good value. And it's not about discounts, it's not about promotions, it's not about offers. And that's why we want to get the price right at the first go. And if the customer does not pick it up, I think we need to look backward and say, what did we not do well that the customer did not like what we are putting on the table? rather than saying, give me a discount, give me a promotion, give me an offer and I'll pick it up. So willingness to stay with the discipline of saying, let's make relevant product land is been at the heart of Westside. And let's not do a lot of gimmicky stuff, which games the customer to turn around and spend money with us. If you walk into a Westside store or you go online to westside.com, you won't want to be spending a lot of time going through a sea of merchandise that may or may not be relevant to you. At first instance itself, there is a lot of effort the Westside teams put together to curate and sift out what's really relevant to customers. At the second instance, you want to make it as easy for the customer to say, I like Bombay Paisley or Azuba. I don't necessarily need to go through all of Zia or Nuon or Wardrobe for that matter. That whole attempt is to simplify for the customer how she selects. It's not the complexity of what you do, but the consistency of what you do over long periods of time. And that is the essence of what Westside represents. You want to put the customer first and say, we want to deliver relevant fashion every week. And you need to be able to do that consistently over very long periods of time because you've established a bunch of disciplines as a business that you will stick to. And I would say Westside is the heart of what defines trend. And it's kind of allowed us to build the overall platform on the back of Westside being a big learning uh, playground. <laughs>